My name is Victor Gamov and uh, this is a session about uh, Ingress Controller and how you can supercharge your Kubernetes applications using some of the bits that we develop here at Kong. I work at Kong as a developer advocate, meaning that I get to talk to developers, get to talk to people about all sorts of technologies. You can find me in Twitter. This is the best place where you can reach out to me if you have any questions. Also, you can use uh, Telegram and also follow me in YouTube. I post some of the videos about the technology regularly. And uh, in this presentation, I would like to share some of the uh, things around how you would deploy your application on Kubernetes and how you provide external access. We uh, will talk a little bit about what does it mean for application to be cloud native or Kubernetes native. Uh, we'll talk about the specific components that Kubernetes provides in order to expose the services to outside world. In this case, it's going to be Kubernetes ingress. Um, I'll show you in my some of my demos how you can expose this simple uh, REST service through ingress. And we will talk a little bit about exotic uh, use case where we need to expose something more stateful, like uh, um, you know HTTP2 streaming and the gRPC protocol. I will show you some how you can enable some of the advanced features without even changing the code of application by simply enabling some of the plugins that will be available in Ingress controller side of things. So in, um, in this section, I would like to introduce uh, the concept of uh, the Kubernetes uh, native application and what does it mean for applications to be, uh, you know, Kubernetes native and what kind of things uh, from perspective of networking, from perspective of uh, communication, uh, you need to understand. So in our Kubernetes cluster, we uh, deploy our applications inside the pods. Pods is a combination of the containers. These containers will be deployed to some of the Kubernetes nodes. And uh, that's how your blank cluster looks like. So there's nothing there. Once you start deploying your applications, your applications will deploy it in the form of deployment, which is a type of uh, resource that's available in Kubernetes. With deployment, you specify what kind of image uh, will be used uh, to be placed inside the pod. And uh, with the number of replicas that particular deployment might contain, you can deploy multiple services. In this particular case, my order service is deployed with three replicas. And in order to provide external access, usually uh, there's a different ways how um, it can be done. However, there's a known type of the deployment called load balancer that will uh, rely on the load balancer uh, that available on Kubernetes. So over the time, you want to deploy more applications and uh, Kubernetes provides a nice uh, feature such as beam packing that allows you to efficiently use the resources in particular nodes and pack the services across uh, multiple different nodes. And in this image, you can see that I added a few more uh, services. Those services might include some analytics, billing, and so far and so on, and the uh, different replication factors for those services. And uh, to provide external access, I also need to think about the load balancer. So Kubernetes developers, the people who develop the, uh, the Kubernetes itself, they come up with this idea of uh, ingress that would be essentially providing the central point to connect to the uh, your application from outside world. So in this case, uh, it comes and uh, you can think about this as a proxy server um, uh, that uh, allows you to you know provide the internal uh, external traffic. Usually, it's uh, it's L7 uh, traffic, meaning it's level seven. It's application level protocols. Um, usually HTTP, HTTPS. And uh, this is where we're coming into this uh, concept of uh, Kubernetes ingress. Let's take a look on how does it look from perspective of, you know, developer to uh, start using this one. So ingress is a Kubernetes resource that will be provisioned by Kubernetes and uh, it allows you to configure access from outside world to some of the services that deployed inside Kubernetes. So as you can see here, I have the service name bills and the service name uh, will be available through uh, the path slash bin if user will go to example.com slash bills. That's how you configure ingress. And as you can see here, the kind of the resource is ingress and Kubernetes would know what to do with this. But essentially it's the, you know, if you've been in this world of the application connectivity for a while, it's the same thing that's um, the traditional load balancer can do. However, it's just unified and uh, more or less standardized the way how you can configure different load balancer or different software that implements such such, such features. Usually load balancer or ingress should uh, do things with um, how to secure services, 
how to provide some of the advanced logging, tracing, and so far and so on. There are ingresses that available that allows you also proxy not, not only L7 protocols, but also L4 protocols like TCP and UDP and TLS and uh, uh, so far and so on. So you can then not only uh, provide the ingress for HTTP uh, server. The traditional uh, traffic management system like you can have canary deployment, blue and green deployment. Um, you can have a load balancing if you're running multiple uh, replicas of the, uh, if you're running multiple replicas of the service, you have the load is balanced across these replicas through this uh, ingress. Once we have this, uh, once we have this definition of ingress, only one only thing what you need to do is just do uh, cook control apply. And what happens is that it will be received by Kubernetes API server. And after that, internally, the, the object ingress will be created. It is up to so-called custom resource controller or ingress controller to figure out what to do with this object. So the Kubernetes only will receive this request, receive these API calls, and after that, the controller that uh, would be listening changes to this resource will be responsible for provisioning the paths and connectivity to particular services. In many cases, developers, when they develop the, uh, the microservices these days, they need to think about multiple things apart from the thinking about the business logic, about the logic of the service and what the service will do. So in this case, the implementing some of the best practices uh, for resiliency, like circuit breakers or rate limiting for to prevent certain services will go uh, down because of the load and, and things like that, like creating kind of like a back pressure and push back the calls from the, uh, from the external system. Next thing is the metrics, logging, tracing all these things to do with how you will provide this for your application because once we go into production we don't want to be blind and don't know what is going on with application some of the important components that usually developers uh, don't think at the day one it's usually uh, what uh, what we call uh, day two responsibilities things around supporting legacy version so how you would gradually upgrade your apis from version one for version two maybe you need to provide layer of transformation should you do this yourself or should the some of the API management platform handle this for you? In this case, it would be a good idea, this proxy, this um, actual implementation that will be running in the listening, the request for, for this ingress will handle certain things for you. All these things that I mentioned, they generally common for all applications that uh, people develop, regardless of language, regardless of logic, regardless of the things what they implement, this stuff that is must to have. So instead of implementing this on the application level side, maybe it should be implementing this on the, uh, the proxy side. So that's what the Kong does. Kong is the open source API management platform that provides wide uh, ecosystem of plugins that are available and you can plug into your application without code changes. So we're gonna be uh, focusing on this one during the demo. For Kubernetes native, it also has Kubernetes native uh, resource that will be listening, the custom controller that will be listening changes on this ingress resource and providing some of the uh, interesting capabilities, you know, on the runtime. Kong has a variety of uh, plugins that allow external, like extend functionality of application. Uh, one of the plugins here is like a API auth, um, the plugin that you can define your some of the uh, keys and get access to APIs only if this key is available as a part of request or uh, request header. Once the uh, this resource will be created, um, the Quonk Ingress controller will listen for this uh, kind of plugins called uh, Quonk plugin and after that we'll manage internally, we'll start instance of this plugin and provide a certain configuration. This configuration would be very different on, on uh, different plugins and I'll show you a couple examples in a few seconds. Once it's done, it's a standard ingress. However, the functionality and some of the additional features on this uh, controller can be extended through annotations. There are some Kong specific annotations that you can put in your uh, ingress resource in order to uh, enable certain uh, cool uh, piece of functionality. But apart from this, it also follows the same specification of ingress. And the cool thing is that those plugins can be changed so you can enable multiple different plugins because it's a Kubernetes resource. It's all done declaratively. So you're not changing the code, you're not telling what to do, you're just telling what you want to have and the ingress controller 
uh, will be able to uh, do this for you. So essentially, this is how the architecture of your application would look like inside the Kubernetes. You're running the your applications, you're running the ingress controller, and they're providing the external access to the clients. And they were calling these um, the REST endpoints so with JSON payload, and they're calling gRPC payload with uh, some of the binary payload and things like that. So those things available. Moreover, Kong also provides not only L7 ingress, but also L4 ingress. So you can expose some of the TCP, TCP streaming um, and TLS services through through this ingress, which is also handy because you control this through the one, one endpoint. There's plenty of different features. Some of them are available as a part of the open source resource. We also provide a enterprise thing, but I'm not going to talk about the enterprise thing. So majority of the things that you will be seeing today, basically all the things that we will see today are open source and available for free. Enough talk. So let me show you how this actually works in the real world and uh, you will understand uh, where we're standing here. So for for this in my in my demo, I do have a Kubernetes cluster. I have a bunch of stuff already installed here. So this is the Kubernetes uh, related things. I have a Kong Ingress controller is installed and uh, I do have uh, some of the cert manager. So the cert manager will handle the provisioning of the um, certificates so I can use like HTTPS in my Kubernetes cluster. But in my default namespace, I do have uh, nothing. So there's nothing there. And um, we're going to be using three services. So first service that we're going to be using today, it's service called Back to Future. So it contains uh, three components. One is a deployment that will include uh, information about this application. So when I go ahead here and I will install this into my Kubernetes cluster, so I should be able to see this application and uh, let me quickly show you what it does. So if I will go here and enable port forwarding to my local, I can go ahead here and create back to future. But in this case, let me do this duplicate. And I'll do this local host. I'm using Insomnia, which is a client for REST endpoints that allows me to test different things. So the my service is a service that generates random quotes from um, some of the popular uh, pop cultural the phenomena like uh, the back to future, for example, when I submit this right now to the service, I'm getting some of the I'm getting some of the information, <laughs> some of the quotes from back to future. Yeah, that that works. However, uh, you cannot rely on port forwarding for your um, uh, for your production use cases like it's, it's good for development. However, uh, we're going to fix this in a second. So I need to go here. So I just go and see if I do have uh, and I will delete this uh, port forwarding for this application. Now, I need to expose this to outside world and the way how to do this, we're going to be using ingress. So this ingress fella uh, right now, it's uh, the standard to uh, the Kubernetes ingress it doesn't have anything except the particular rule. Another thing that this ingress uh, will be connected to this service. So in this case, I need to deploy the service first service essentially just exposes things that are available in my deployment. So it will be available inside Kubernetes cluster. And after that, based on name, we also provide connection to this service through outside world. So go ahead and apply this one. I do have a. So this is my uh, back to future service and that's up and running. It uses cluster IP, but it doesn't have external IP. However, if I do okay, get service namespace Kong and in this case Kong proxy, I do have external access here. So this is external IP that available. So this is what IP I will be using to hit my uh, my service. So service is updated. Now it's time to create ingress for this one. So go ahead, ingress, ingress created. Before that, let me do this one first. Um, let me show you how does it look like. So we're going into back to future and we're removing ingress for a second. So if I will try to reach this particular IP address, so if I will just do something like HTTP 34 73 214, uh, we'll get some of the uh, response from, oops, of course, that's seven. 
no routes match those values. So meaning that its response came from uh, from Kong. So meaning that someone is listening to this IP address. Now, if I go and apply this one more time, applying this ingress. So in this case, will I hit this one? Still nothing. But if I will go to and hit this back to future, I have a predefined, I have a predefined back to future thing. Uh, maybe during redeployments, my IP address changed. So we will fix that in a second. So that's why it's always good to rely on a DNS name. So let's do this one. I have a DNS configure for this. So it's connected to my Kubernetes cluster. So I will be using just DNS name. Uh, but let's uh, let's copy it here. Click done. So in this case, I can use proxy address. Okay. So when I send this, now my service is available to external during the time when you're watching this presentation, probably this cluster will not be available. But trust me, if it will be live, you will be able to hit this one uh, with me in this section. And we can see here that Kong is actually providing some of the headers that you can tell that um, is actually going through the Kong. So once it's there, so let's try to um, doing something fun. So for example, when I do this, I can send request every two seconds. So every two seconds, it will submit this request and uh, we will see this actually is happening. In some cases, I want to prevent this kind of like a uh, unlimited access to some resources because maybe I want to charge for this information. Maybe I want to adding some of the rate limiting in order to uh, prevent of denial of service. So how I can do this? I don't need to implement this myself. I can enable this through plugin. So I'm going ahead here and create the plugin uh, that says Kong plugin and uh, it has rate free tier and I can do only five requests per minute based on the caller IP address. Local policy means that it will be using the information on storing information about the sessions through some memory storage, but also the persistent storage is supported for production deployment. And as you can see here, this is the custom resource. If I will go in my Kubernetes cluster and can say K get CRDs. So some of the things that I'll just do boot up. Ingress controller installs some of these uh, CRDs. So in this case, there's a uh, Kong plugins and if I'll do K get Kong plugins. And I'll get nothing because no, no plugins installed. So I'm go ahead here and just say apply. So once I will do this, I have this plugin enable called rate limiting. Now, as you can see here, my application is still hitting here. Nothing changed, even though I deployed the plugin. I need to enable this plugin in my in my ingress. So I created this annotation, kongechq.com slash plugin slash rate free tier. The same plugin that I just created here. This is rate free tier. So if I'll go ahead and uh, click apply. So in this case, it will update ingress immediately. And what we start seeing here that now we start receiving rate limiting headers that coming to my service. And after five attempts, we start getting response called too many requests and the information about when this reset, uh, when this uh, thing will be reset. So in this case, we see this 12, 10. So in 10 seconds, we will have ability to reset this. Now, next thing is that I want to show you how we can enable some of the, um, some of the chaining of the plugin. So next thing is that I have a service that uh, will provide some of the facts about Chuck Norris. And uh, I will go ahead and deploy this. Also service, pretty much the same thing. It uses the same container, but uh, based on the environment variable configuration, it will be using uh, the Chuck Norris quote service instead of back to future. And uh, I need to enable ingress for Chuck Norris service. So I will go ahead here and the click apply. Now I will be able to, let's stop this. So now I will be able to send some information about, get some information about Chuck Norris. As you can see, this is my response. Now, obviously Chuck Norris is so epic that his code is uh, optimized by, by design. So it works. 
So for this one, we want to enable different uh, rating policy. We want it to provide a, a pay tier. So for example, someone would accessing this uh, Chuck Norris API, they will be getting the 10 requests per second, oh, per minute, I'm sorry. So, and in this case, there is a uh, small uh, difference between those two plugins. I also want to provide a secret key that will identify this caller uh, with system so we can figure out that this thing is, uh, is, is, is connected. So in this case, I will be using uh, Kubernetes secret to store information about this user key. And after that, I enable this plugin configuration based on consumer. And the consumer, uh, the customer source that will be handling situation of the delegating access to the secret key. And after that, uh, providing uh, correct calls. So when I go ahead here and I just do apply this, I will create new plugin. So if I'll go, okay, get called plugins. I had the pay tier and the user auth uh, plugin as well. So when I try to hit this, let's see paid. So it's the same uh, same endpoint. And when I send this request, there's no headers. There are no headers about uh, rate limiting because I didn't enable this in ingress. So what I go here and enable, let's start like a uh, one by one. So I'm going here into this one, enabling using user auth and we can go in here and creating this one. So when I click here, now I'm getting the unauthorized so immediately. So I updated this information and immediately I start getting this unauthorized exception. I know this is the coming from uh, from Kong, meaning that it's uh, there's no um, I, I don't have access here. Even though I providing my API key, I didn't create a Kubernetes secret. So in this case, I need to go and create two secrets here. So I will go ahead and just do Kubernetes plugins, create Chuck Norris secrets create two secret, one secret will be responsible for uh, user one. And after that, uh, we're gonna be using this for another use case. So when I send this, I have a request 200. And now I'm using this rate limiting with 10 requests. So I will do send and we're good, right? So it's 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 great. Now, the, the one last thing that I want to do here, I also want to provide another service uh, or layer of service to users, service that will uh, provide the, the like unlimited access, like a uh, hundreds requests. So there's a platinum level, and the platinum level also will be using a the off a plugin. But in the platinum level, I will be able to configure with different see hundred of of the of the request. So I'm go ahead this apply this one, and if I'm going to my ingress, I will enable all three plugins. See, now my Chuck Norris service will be responsible for all these three plugins. Now, when I click here, this one still works and I still have a 10 requests. I can send this. But if I providing the different API key, so in this case, Roundhouse Kick is my API key for Platinum Access. Now you see here, I have a hundred requests and I have a 99 requests left. So. That's my Platinum level. So that's uh, two plugins that we deploy for REST service. But what about non-REST services? So let's uh, take a look on one quick uh, one. I do have another service that will deploy a, another third one code service that will generate uh, random quotes from a movie Dune. And after that, this service will expose those uh, quotes through uh, gRPC. Uh, gRPC, it is a uh, remote procedure call protocol that was created uh, and highly influenced by some of the technologies that people at Google have and uh, donated to cloud uh, um, cloud native um, since here cloud native um, uh, for foundation and now it's it's developing open source lots of services use this and the cool thing about gRPC it provides some of the features that rest doesn't have like uh, bi-directional communication or, or streaming of the response. So that's what we're going to be deploying right now. And uh, I'm going to be just go ahead, show you quickly. The service is also this same old, same old service. The last thing is that here is 
ingress and for the ingress I need to specify some specific things. In this particular case I need to specify that this is the protocol gRPC and the Kong will figure out how to connect to this gRPC service. Another thing that I need to specify here is that um, it's, it's going to be using gRPC S uh, for secure. So just uh, give me a second. I'll just do Kubernetes Dune created the service and now I'm switching back to my Insomnia where I can use the my gRPC service and call my uh, get quote. And now I'm receiving this through gRPC. As you can see, it's a Dune a call and I'm calling gRPC server that's available on my Kubernetes cluster. Also, I can do this on gRPC streaming and as a stream, I received 10 responses from my gRPC service. That's how you can do this. By the way, the demo of this is available. You can find this on, uh, on my GitHub and uh, it's uh, freely available for everyone uh, to play around with. That is it for today. I showed you everything that I wanted. I showed you how you can deploy your services and expose the services to outside world, regardless if you're using REST service or you're using something like gRPC. With this, my name is Victor Gamofen. As always, have a nice day.